there are indications and applications of extracorporeal support that I think are straightforward. I, I'm, I, I'm only trying to present the information we have with regard to using extracorporeal support as a treatment for patients with severe hypoxic lung failure. Right. There, I do not see compelling evidence that extracorporeal support is followed by more favorable outcomes than other approaches that are used. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare to claim that, that there would never be a patient with lung failure for whom extracorporeal support is appropriate or indicated. I just don't know how to identify that patient. Mm -hmm. And I just say that we need more compelling evidence from rigorous uh, uh, controlled studies, uh, preferably randomized clinical trials, before extracorporeal support uh, can be suggested as a uh, widely applied therapy for adults with uh, severe hypoxic lung failure. The H1N1 is one subset of patients with severe hypoxemic lung failure for whom the evidence is not clear at all that ECMO is indicated. Uh, there are probably others. The, the, the two studies to which I made reference, the extracorporeal membrane oxygen, oxygenation study published in 1979 and the extracorporeal CO2 removal study published in 1994, uh, both indicate that for uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome patients, ECMO provided no survival advantage. And those were not H1N1 novel influenza patients, as far as we know.